Okay, we're going to try this again. Now, last week I uh, worked on a machine just like this one. This is a Tascam Model 32. And uh, this one actually belongs to the same client who brought in the one last week that I did the relapping on, which the video didn't go so well because I didn't have my camera aimed well. This time I think I've got it a little closer. And since this one needs a head relap as well, we're going to do this again and see if we can't make it where you can see a little better. So uh, if, you, if you haven't watched the first video, I'm going to put a card up in the uh, top right-hand corner of the screen right about here. Take a look at it and uh, watch that video first and then come back to this one. And uh, you'll be able to see a little better what's going on. So we're going to start with 600 grit paper. This is wet dry uh, paper. It's not actually sandpaper, it's another material. There are several companies that make it and uh, you can get this from Amazon or probably from your local hardware store. And we're going to wet it down a little bit. I'm not going to use a lot of water. We're just going to do that, spread it around a little bit. Like that. And I'm actually going to turn the paper this way because I don't want the head to go over this hump when I begin lapping it. And uh, there we are. I mentioned last week that most three head tape recorders use different heads for the record and play functions. Uh, the record head is optimized for record by having a wider gap and a smaller number of turns on the coil inside the head. The playback head will be optimized for playback by having a narrower gap and more turns of wire on the coil. But TIAC and TASCAM do not do that. Uh, this is the record head. This is the play head out of that machine and as you can see they have exactly the same part number and they actually say TIAC, two track, two channel, record play, 5378301.8. They are the same head. Uh, at 15 inches a second tape speed, that doesn't really make a whole lot of difference. You can get away with that, but still, uh, this is part of what separates a semi professional machine, which is what this is, from a fully pro machine like an Otari or a Studer or a Scully. So we're going to start with the record head. And uh, I don't know if you can see it on this camera. I don't know if there's enough resolution or if the light's right. But as I take my fingernail, see how it hangs? That is the wear gap. And what's happened is as the tape goes across this head, the tape wears the head. And you get these edges. And those edges are what cause the real problem. Because when you play a tape next, or try to record a tape, it will catch on those edges and it will be pushed away from the face of the head. This is the actual head. So this area here, I hope you can see this. This is actually the, the casing of the head. This is the shield for the guard band, which is in between the two tracks. And you can learn more about tracks and guard bands by going to the video that's shown in the card in the upper right hand corner here. Uh, this is the left channel head, this is the right channel head, left channel on top, and this is the casing again. And so what happens is the tape goes across the two tracks in the guard band and it wears that down and it leaves the casing where it was. And the next time you run a tape across it, the, that tape will catch on those edges and will be pushed away from the active part of the head and that reduces your high frequency response dramatically and in bad cases you can even extend down into the mid-range and cause all kinds of problems. So we don't want that so what we're going to do is we're going to lap this head and what we're going to do is we're going to simply wear the casing down so that it's the same height as the worn area of the head so that those edges no longer exist. That is our goal. So we're going to start with 600 grit paper. I'm going to hold the head in my hand this way and we're going to go back and forth in a rocking motion. And I'm going to put about a pound of pressure on the face of the head. And as I said in the previous video, the water will not hurt the head. It is completely sealed. You're not going to hurt it with water. And we're just going to rock back and forth. 600 grit 
a lot of people might consider that to be a pretty fine paper. Uh, for this purpose, it's actually very coarse. And it's going to wear away that excess metal fairly quickly, which is what we're looking for. Uh, we are going to go to higher grits of paper, that is finer papers, in a few minutes. We're going to go all the way through 22,000 grit. And by grit, that means how many uh, pieces of the abrasive material will fit in an inch. So this is 600 grit, 600 bits in an inch. And the finest paper, the one we're going to end up on, is 22,000 per inch. Uh, this first lapping does just about all of the metal removal. It's going to get things back down to where we want them to be, but it's going to leave scratches on the head, and all of the subsequent lappings are to get rid of those scratches and polish the head. When we get through, that head's going to shine like glass. Wow, we're almost there. By Georgia, I think we've got it. We have already worn away the little bit of metal we needed to wear away. We've gotten rid of our wear groove, so now it's on to the polishing. First, we're going to do the other head off camera, because I'm going to do two heads, and I'm going to do the exact same thing to this head I did to the other, so I'm not going to show it. Okay, so we have both heads now lapped down to the 600 grit level. This is 1800 grit paper, three times as fine as the one we used before. We're going to wet it down. Now, as I say, uh, these subsequent levels of paper are not so much for taking away metal as for polishing the face of the head. So I'm going to show you this head, and hopefully this is showing up on camera. And uh, the wear groove is gone, but the head is not as pretty as it should be. It has visible scratches that run this way, the same direction that I was uh, lapping in. And we have to make those go away. So that's what we're about to do. Now, I think you can already see it's starting to get a shine. That's a little closer to where we want to be. If I can get the water out of the way, I can still see scratches. But they're going to get smaller and smaller as we go. somewhere. Let's compare that head to this head. And I think you can see the difference. We haven't done this head on the 1800 yet. Let's go ahead and do that. I'll do that off camera. Okay, so now we have uh, got both heads done at the 1800 grit level. And we're moving up to, let's see, 8000 grit. 8000 grit is some pretty fine paper, but it's not nearly as fine as what we're going to go to. So we're going to start with the record head again. And again, at this point, we're just putting a polish on the face of the head. We're not taking away metal, although I wish someone would take away this phone because I get tired of listening to it. So anyway, we're polishing the head to get rid of the scratches. And what's important about that is not so much that the head look pretty, which it will make the face of the head look pretty, but the smoother the head is, the less it will wear oxide off of the tape as the tape runs past it. So that makes the tape last longer, and it also means that the heads don't have to be cleaned nearly as often. 
So we want the heads to be as smooth as they can possibly be. And that's what we're doing now. That's starting to get quite a little polish on it. All right, we're going to do the other head off camera. So we've got both heads done at that level and we're moving up to 10,600 grit. Put that puppy down there, give it a little water. This is the second to last stage. And again, we're gonna start with the record head. Now, relapping heads is something you can do at home. As I said in the previous video, you'll need the uh, sanding material that I've shown here. You'll need a piece of flat glass and uh, you'll need a few tools. Now the hard part is not the lapping of the heads. The hard part is once you put the heads back in, you're going to need to mechanically realign them and for that you're going to need specialty alignment tapes. Uh, I use tapes made by Magnetic Reference Laboratory. They cost about $140 a piece. I have one for half track 15 inch per second heads. Well actually it's for 15 inch per second machines. Uh, whether half track or whatever and I have another that's for consumer seven and a half inch per second machines uh, you have to have the two different tapes in order to set the equalization and so on but uh, either tape will do for setting azimuth and uh, then you also have to know how to set zenith and head height that's the hard part and of course the desoldering and resoldering of the heads and speaking to the desoldering and resoldering I'll tell you this if you go to do this yourself and you choose to unsolder and resolder the heads, which you pretty much have to do in order to do this, do not leave the heat on the head too long, not more than a couple of seconds for each connection. The reason is, here are the pins on the back of the head that the wires solder to. On the other side of those pins, inside the head, is the extremely fine wire that the head windings are made from and it's soldered to that pin too and if you leave the heat on for more than a couple of seconds you can unsolder that head wire and if you do that the head's ruined it's over throw it away it's no good and while it's possible to find these heads you can find uh, used Tascam heads that are in good shape They'll run you mm, 150 bucks a piece or thereabouts, maybe 200. And let's not even talk about what a uh, Tascam, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, a Studer or an Otari or worse yet, a Scully head will cost. Uh, we're talking about, you know, mortgaging your house. Well, not really, but a lot of money. All right, let's see what we have. And get the water out of the way. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's uh, let's go on to the other head. We'll do that off camera. This is the finest paper I use, twenty-two thousand grit. It is tremendously fine. And in fact, I had it uh, marked on the wrong side. This is actually the side that we're interested in. You actually have a little trouble telling which side you want to polish on with this because it is so stupid fine. So we're going to put a little bit of water on it. As I say this, uh, I said in the last video, this uh, almost feels like notebook paper. It doesn't feel like any kind of grinding or sanding paper. So we're gonna, just going to do the record head on camera. and Again, I'll do the play head off camera because it's the same exact process. But this is the final paper. It's going to put the final polish on it. And when I get done, we'll uh, see if we can take a look at it.
looks pretty good. All right, I'm going to do the other head off camera, and then I'll come back and we'll finish up. We're all done with the lapping. Let's clean one of these off and take a look. We're just getting the water off it. Now that is a mirror finish. That's what I'm looking for. I can run my fingernail across it. Doesn't catch my fingernail. No more rare groove. Let's try the other one. And get the water off it. That's what I'm looking for. And again, the wear groove's gone. So that's head relapping, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, these are in good shape and should last for quite a long time. Uh, there is a limit just so you know, to uh, how long heads will last even with relapping. And uh, the issue is simply this, uh, the gap in the head, uh, which actually picks up the magnetic field from the tape or lays it down, it's too small to see, but it's there. And uh, what happens is, because of the way these pole pieces are made, uh, as you go deeper into the head this way, as you wear the head down, the gap is straight for some time and then it begins to widen out. When you wear it down far enough that you've gotten to where the gap begins to widen out, that head is done. It's over. Uh, as, the, as the gap gets wider, the inductance of the head drops like a rock. It becomes impossible to make your adjustments for flat response. And also, while the wider gap won't really hurt recording too much, it will definitely impair playback. Playback always works better with a narrower tape gap because it allows for the pickup of higher frequencies. So that's uh, that's relapping in a nutshell and uh, I'm going to put this machine back together. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.